Today we're at Jake's house, and we're gonna be talking about demolition and deconstruction. We're gonna be talking about what we did with the old house when we built this new house. So let's take it away. We're uh, back at Jake's house again, and we're standing in front of an old pile of timbers. So maybe you can tell me the story of this project and what exactly happened to the existing house. So this house uh, needed to go. It was quite old and it was a patchwork of sheds and houses, pergolas. Uh, there was an old tiki bar in the back of the lot. Uh, none of it was uh, usable for building into a new home other than so things like these old timbers. They had uh, been used similar to a log cabin style, not a very seismic safe type of building, but it did last for some time. So the homeowner knew these were in place and it was, took several layers to get to this point where we were able to salvage these upon deconstruction. So then tell me about, uh, you said the existing condition of the house is not great. So like, tell me, did we have lead and asbestos in this project? Yeah, uh, when you go to demolish a house, you have to have the building tested for any aspects of lead or asbestos. And they did come up. There were some uh, sealants used at the roof line around roof jacks that have asbestos. And a lot of the window paint is lead coated. So you have to remediate that in some way. So there's different companies that do different aspects of those remediation processes. And then you bring back the testing firm to show that you've done those practices. Okay. So a special company had to come in and do their work, removing the lead and removing the asbestos. And then we had to test it again to make sure that was all gone. Why do we have to do that? To certify for the city's needs that it's a safe work spot. And we're also required as a building company to make sure that we're doing lead and asbestos testing by the EPA, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah, because as you do, uh, as you demolish things that are containing lead or asbestos, you can actually release those back to the atmosphere and then in order to protect the neighbors, they have to be removed in a, a confident fashion. So it's not just the workers that we're protecting, it's all the neighbors uh, in that entire area. Absolutely. And, and the same when the building came down, they completely uh, continually suppress the dust that's coming off the building from the removal machinery. Okay. So that's also suppressing uh, airborne elements. Okay. So normally when we're demoing a house, we really don't want to spend it, uh, take that whole house and put it into the landfill. So what's the process that we went through to kind of salvage as much of the material, including the beams that we're standing in front of, out of that house? Like what's kind of step one? Well, identifying what, what could be easily removed and brought to another location to be reused, and also what uh, can be resold possibly. Uh, there's a lot of companies, nonprofits, that will come in and take some of the elements and resell them. We found with this building that there weren't enough uh, uniform window types of windows that were reusable or uh, flooring material. It wasn't a very big house. So we, we did take further steps in order to find homes for these parts and pieces and be able to recycle them. Okay, so when we do that, so say we did have some stuff that we could take out of that house and donate to one of these nonprofits. Is there a benefit to the client for that? Absolutely. There's uh, a tax structure that they can get a, a tax write-off uh, for the elements that are repurposed. Okay, so then they get to basically donate that and it, and it functions as a donation to a nonprofit. And then that nonprofit can give them a tax card that says we've donated $80,000 worth of material to, to this company. And it's the homeowner that's actually donating, not, not the company, right? Correct, they and own then, the building and they benefit from that tax. So then that they get a tax uh, reduction, so it reduc reduces their income tax. So it basically helps pay for the demolition of that house. Is that right? Correct. There, there could even be a break-even point. Okay. Wow, that's so great. So then, what happens if nobody actually wants any of the materials, or no company wants any of the materials out of this site? Well, what we found in this building, after the elements that that could be reused, a couple plastic sheds, there was a really nice gas stove. Uh, so we found homes for some of those parts. And then from that point, we were approached by a salvage contractor that has a database of individuals that like to reuse parts and they know the historic aspect or, or the amounts are cap they're capable of removing. So this contractor actually provides us with an insurance to protect anybody coming on site to remove elements. He basically records everything on the property that could be repurposed 
and then puts it on his database and then people contact him over a period of a week so that he can resell things. So pavers, windows, uh, some landscaping stones, some trees, um, some of the uh, outside elements, copper wire was recycled, metal materials re recycled, repurposed. So we're actually showing you right now uh, an actual database or a, a list of all the materials that were taken out. And like you said, trees, rocks, I mean, it was really an amazing assortment of things that didn't end up going into the landfill. Yeah, we were surprised even that some of the towel bars were repurposed. That's, so then how does that benefit to the client? Uh, he has the knowledge that some of these things didn't make it into the landfill. So keeping things out of that waste stream, it's a feel good moment. Uh, and especially something like these beams, he has an idea to make wood furniture out of something that, that is a historic tight grain, old growth redwood. So we're also, as a builder, required to divert most of an old house demolition out of the waste stream so it doesn't go directly into a landfill. And we're actually uh, made to put in a deposit on that so that if we don't divert, and I think this property is 80%, so if 80% of the existing house goes, uh, more than 20% uh, goes into a landfill, we actually have to pay a fine for that. So we're really trying to find places for all this, but we also want to make it beneficial to the, to the client, the homeowner, right? Absolutely. So then the guy that came in and basically had a bunch of people that would buy this stuff, he got to keep the money, but he, got, he gave a tax credit to the uh, individual, the homeowner, that they got to use similar to the other companies as a reduction of their taxes. And we got a certificate that said we diverted an additional amount of money or an additional amount of materials out of the waste stream. So like kind of everybody benefits and the people who buy this stuff buy it at a fraction of the cost it would normally cost. And so everybody is kind of made out uh, in a beneficial way by not demoing this house with a giant excavator, right? Absolutely. Okay, so then after kind of all the valuable materials are pulled out, we really are left with kind of a shell of a house. And this is a house that was very unique because it was made with essentially old timbers. So how did we save these old timbers when we had a big excavator come in? Uh, the excavator has a, a, a grabbing element to the bucket and he was able to just barely pinch these items and shake the, the grout free. It was a surprising how easily these were connected and, and not in a very uh, seismically safe manner. Uh, from our perspective of how we build modern buildings, but they, they're in great condition. We just had a musical interlude by a passenger train that unfortunately passes by this site every 16 to 20 minutes. And we're gonna be talking a lot more videos about this project, and specifically we're gonna be addressing things like indoor air quality, sound attenuation. So make sure you hit subscribe because we're gonna show you how to build a better way.